Hi, welcome to Air Quadenting. Today's another episode where I'm going to be working on my CB Performance engine, the Builder's Choice Engine Kit 2017 CC. And today I'm going to be dialing in the cam. Now, what does that even mean? I've only recently just found out about this. When I got the cam, I'll grab it out of the box and we fitted up the cam gears. It comes with different colored washers, which sit in here, which allow you to dial the cam in. Now, what these washers do is they either advance the gear by two degrees or they retard it by two degrees. And therefore you can get your inlet and outlet valves opening at the right time in comparison to the crank. So it's the internal ti timing of the engine. It's the heart of the engine. Bob Hoover did a, a brilliant blog all about time, uh, cam gear dialing in and I'm going to be following that religiously and that's what we're going to go through today or well, over the next few days. It's quite time consuming, you've got to semi build up the engine and there's lots of steps. First of all you've got to find true top dead centre um, and then you've got to find the point when the, uh, the valves are opening. Um, where the valves open at, um, I think it's half an inch, or is it is it a tenth of an, uh, uh, a fiftieth of an inch? I don't know. I need to look it up. And it's all based around this, a cam card, which I hadn't even heard of until I got this engine on the go. So here's the cam card, and it basically shows you during the cycle of the uh, crank turning round what degrees the valves open and close. So intake valve opens at 19 degrees before top dead center, and then it stays open. And the intake valve, when you come around to 50, 50, was that one? 51 degrees after bottom dead center, it closes. Same with the exhaust. The exhaust opens at 53 degrees before bottom dead center, and then closes again at 17 degrees after top dead center. So it gives you these washers so that if it's not spot on with the first set of washers I put in, which are the zero offset ones, it's just as the gear comes, I can move it two degrees, and get it closer to these numbers. Hopefully we will get it spot on these numbers. Um, and then we know that the valves are opening at the absolute ideal time. And also in this process, we will find out um, the exact measurement of degrees for us to help us, well, for when the valves are open by a certain amount, as I say, I think it's a 50th of an inch um, or 0 0.05 of an inch, or is it 0 0.50? I can't remember, we'll look it out. So that you can then set up the exact geometry of your rocker arms so that you are getting perfect mechanical timing. And then the electrical timing can be a degree or two out apparently, but it's getting this, the heart of the engine right, which is gonna make it give you the most maximum output of power. First thing to do is I'm gonna connect number one com rod, um, and then we're gonna plop the crank in the case with the flywheel on. Already set up the end float, then we'll drop the cam in, then we'll button down the case. Cylinder number one journal is this one. We have number one Conrod marked up. Um, these have already been cleaned. First thing we're going to do, assembly lube, get a molly. Rub it around again, like we did with the main bearings, not getting any in the oil holes. Secret sauce. Give it a stir with your sink finger. A little bit on the bearing. I say a little bit, being quite liberal. 
So the rod can go on one of two ways. It can either go on this way or this way. There is a correct way and a wrong way. The correct way is with the tabs facing down. So if you imagine the crank was in the engine case, flywheel at the back, gears at the front, or actually that's the other way around, isn't it? Then the tabs go on the bottom, so it goes that way up. So it just slides on like that. And then we have, you have to have the numbers matching up. So the number on the cap, the number on the rod go on the same side. So once they're on like that, we attach the um, the rod nuts. Now, the rod nuts apparently have this assembly lube on them and some Loctite, so we're gonna do that now. This is the stuff that comes with them. Fastener assembly lubricant used to precisely replicate all ARP fastener stamp load specifications. So basically this is just to help your torque settings be really super accurate. So you've got some of that stuff on there. Now I've also read you put Loctite on as well. I'm not sure how the Loctite's gonna, gonna work with a lubricant as well, but I'm gonna put some on anyway. So drop of that, pop them in. So got those down finger tight, then I'm just going to snug them, doing a little bit on each side first. Try not to turn them too much because you don't want the bearings to come out. Turns nicely. We're then going to torque it down. Specifications for this, as we spoke about in the last episode or so ago, it's 15 foot pounds, 20 foot pounds, 25 foot pounds, and then finally 29. So we'll start with 15. 15 foot pounds. Twenty foot pounds. Twenty five foot pounds. Twenty nine foot pounds. I always do them a couple of times, as Harry Peller says, appease the Porsche gods, or in this case, appease the CB gods, the CB performance gods. So you spin it around and see if there's any tight spots. Can't feel any tight spots. I mean, considering the clearances were, measure were measured to be quite loose, it feels quite snug, a little bit of resistance. Not a huge amount. It's a little bit of travel up and down, which is what you, what you want. You tip, tip it round. Yeah. Good. To aid the process of dialing in the cam, I'm just going to be attaching this one rod and all will become apparent um, as we move forward through this procedure, this is the first, I have to say, this is the first time I'm doing this. I've never done it before. I'm just following Bob Hoover's blog, which is a big old long bit of text, no diagrams or pictures. So I'm just following the text in the best way I see fit. Right, we're putting the crank in with the flywheel on. Never done that before. Not that ideal way of doing it. So obviously number one rod attached. Spin these bearings round to their marks. As we've done before, we get the bearing half from the other side of the crank. 
put it in. Yeah, that's seating perfectly well. To dial in the cam, we're just measuring the movement of the lifters on number one cylinder. So we only need to put in these two. So it's going to put a bit of oil on them. And side them in. I've never fit these before, so I don't know how well they fit. Now, because the cam is going to come into contact with these lifters for the first time, I'm going to put a little bit of secret sauce on, which is just a bit stickier and it's not going to run off and it's going to keep them lubricated for this measurement process. Now, before I turn this case upside down and try and put it on the other half, obviously the lifters are just going to fall, fall out. So you can get special valve lifting springs and in my drawer of specialist VW engine parts, I've got a bit of coat hanger. Um, and it just, I'm trying, I'm trying not to get in the way, it just goes in using the spring of the coat hanger, just goes inside the lifters. Has gone in? It goes inside the lifters and just holds them in place. So hopefully, let me turn it upside down. Yeah, they don't, they don't fall out. Before we put the other half of the case on, a bit of oil on the cam bearings. Squeeze it round. So I've got the two dots on the front here, then I have the dot on this tooth here. And I line the dots up so that they combine and then I just roll the can down the gears and in. In. Then I'm just going to turn it around just to double check. Yep. Dots are lining nicely. So now we have the crank in, the flywheel on, end float set, thrust set on the um, cam gear. We have the backlash set within a good tolerance, and we have number one rod on. And I'm going to now close the case up temporarily for the minute. And I'm, to do that, I'm going to need to balance this rod upright so that there's not an earthquake. with my retainer on the lifters hopefully they'll behave themselves and stay where they are and drop this on and the case is together now I can take these uh, this clip out and the lifters are in there Good. Get my Mr. Strong box out. With the case together, I very quickly put the piston on, put the slip the wrist pin in pop the jug on and then I've attached my deck height tool which is basically a metal plate which just clamps down on top of the cylinder and holds the cylinder in place. I'm going to cover cylinder and piston installation um, when we actually do it in anger. This is just to find top dead centre and dial in the cam. Now I went out I say I went out, I went on my computer and I bought this, which is uh, a degree wheel. It just bolts on where the crank pulley goes. And then I've made a pointer out of an old bit of clothes hanger and attached that to the case. And we're now going to find true top dead center. You're probably wondering why I'm not just putting the crank pulley on and using the timing mark on the pulley to find top dead centre. Well, that's accurate enough for electrical timing for your spark. But when you're talking about the minutiae of the physical timing of the crank opening and clo closing via the cam, 
the inlet and outlet valves, then we want to be absolutely spot on. So we're going to find top dead centre using the bolt technique and I'm following Bob Hoover's blog post about dialing in a cam. So to do that, we just put the plate on like I showed you, um, tighten the uh, bolt down which you use to measure your deck height and then turn very gently um, the engine over clockwise until the piston can't move anymore. Then we make a note of the on the degrees wheel with the pointer where it's stopping. Then we turn the engine back anti-clockwise all the way around until the piston stops again. Then we know for certain that top dead center is exactly between those two marks. So we find the difference between those two marks and we halve it and that is your top dead center. So I'm gonna go through that now. I wound in the calibration bolt on the deck height tool and I just gently turn, I don't want to mark the pulley, I'm just gently turning the flywheel until it stops. There you go. I'm not sure if you can see the piston moving, but it reaches there and stops. Just gently doing that. So looking at the degree wheel, when we hit the bolt on top of the deck height tool, we are four degrees before top dead center. So I'm going to spin the motor back anti-clockwise and find where we hit again the bolt. Spin it round, we know it's roughly one revolution. And once we get round to here I'm going to have a look. It's just there. And looking at the pointer, it is nine and a half degrees before top dead centre. So true top dead centre on this motor is halfway between four and a half, four degrees rather, before top dead centre and nine and a half degrees before top dead centre. A little bit of maths again, 9.5 degrees before top dead centre we got in one direction and in the other direction we got four degrees before top dead center now this is on the, the degree wheel which was just put on roughly where i thought top dead center would be and it turns out i was a few, quite a few degrees out so the difference between these two numbers is 5.5 degrees half of that difference is 2.75 degrees so top dead center on the engine is 6.75 degrees before the top dead center on the degree wheel. So we'll set that and then we will recalibrate the, the degree wheel. So now being very, very careful to not move our pointer, we release this screw, this bolt, so the engine can turn over freely unhindered. So the locking bolt has been rolled out and I'm going to turn the engine round a bit more precisely than that and find 6.75 degrees. Now obviously we haven't got any markings between the degrees so I'm just having to eyeball it. And I'd say, I'm crouching down and having a proper good look, a bit more. I would say that is 6.75 degrees before top dead center. So I'm gonna recalibrate my pointer and I've got it bang on first time. Nope, needs to go over a bit more. A bit more. A bit more, come on. It's quite springy. There we go. Now we are set. We've found true top dead centre. 
So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to rock it backwards and forwards to see Yeah, you can see the dwell on the top of the piston. It stays stationary for a beat. And by doing this bolt method, we found the exact middle point um, as far as the mechanical timing goes for where that piston is stationary at the top of its stroke. So good job, top dead center found. Now it's really important we do not knock or move this pointer now that it is, it is zeroed in. And what I'm gonna do is, because I haven't got the pulley wheel on, and I don't know where the pulley mark is, because when we're setting the electrical timing, you're looking for the parting line of the case, and you eyeball and line up the mark on the pulley wheel with the parting line of the case. Now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna put a little bit of tape on the back of the flywheel, and I'm gonna mark the flywheel where the parting line is on the back of the case, so that when I put the pulley wheel on, I can line the flywheel up to exactly where we know top dead sensor is and make a new mark on the pulley if needed. So you can see here, I put a bit of tape on the flywheel and then I just where the parting line is, I've just eyeballed and drawn a pencil mark. Having top dead centre marks precisely on your pulley wheel isn't really essential as long as you have a rough idea of where that is to set up your ignition timing. But the other benefit, I think, of marking the pulley wheel, uh, sorry, the flywheel like this, is that if for some reason, inexplic inexplicable reason, my coat hanger wire gets moved and I lose the calibration of my degree wheel, I can find it again by using my backup mark on the flywheel without having to go through the whole process of finding true top dead centre again. So the next part of the process is measuring the lift of the valves. And we do that by putting a dial indicator onto the end of the lifters to see when the lifters are coming up and when they're coming down. And then we take a series of measurements which tell us when the valves open in relation to degrees turned on the crank. Now, the lifters, I've got one here, are hollow and your push rods go down inside inside the lifter. Now my dial gauge isn't long enough to get through the case into the bottom of the lifters and also the bottom of the lifters are um, spherical um, like the end of the push rod. So I've got one I've got the push rod adjustable push rod here so the end of the push rods are um, uh, spherical as well. So getting an accurate measurement, I'm not too sure about that. So what I've done is I've taken a set of 30 horsepower lifters which are connected to the push rods, they're all built into one thingy. Um, and I've got a couple of these which are damaged. So I cut a section off the end of one of these here, um, which fits nice and snug inside this lifter and then I have pressed in a piece of M10 thread and then I have ground off the end so it's nice and flat so this sits inside the lifter and then we can get the dial indicator in through the push rod hole in the case and onto the end of the lifter and we'll be able to get an accurate measurement. Just to add, I mean, you could use anything. I looked for a socket, first of all, which would fit in here. And I, I found one nine mil socket, which went in there, but it was a little bit loose, um, a lot looser than this. Um, and I was worried about not getting an accurate measurement. If you have a lathe, if I had a lathe, which I really wish I had the room for one because I'd be using it all the time, I would have just laid down a piece of a uh, bar and uh, made it into a tool which protrudes from the actual case, long enough to come from the case. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I would have kept it about this length just to keep accuracy in case it's moving around. And you could have just laid it down so it just fits in perfectly snugly. Um, and that's what I recommend you do if you have access to a lathe or a machine shop. So there's the lifter in the case and you're just dropping the tool in. 
and it just sits inside. So we can see it moves up, doesn't touch the case at all, and turns down and will allow us to make an accurate measurement with the dial gauge indicator. The dial indicator is set up to be as solid as I can get it. I've made a clamp which bolts to the side of the engine case and then the magnetic base I've G-clamped to that clamp. Um, but the armature to get across to the intake valve, uh, intake lifter rather, is quite long. So there's a little bit of flex in both those rods. So it's not ideal, but we'll see what we get. You can see the, the anvil on the end of the dial indicator is sitting on top of a little spacer I made, which is sitting inside the lifter. So you're gonna run through this together. So first thing we do is you just rotate the engine round and we'll see the dial indicator isn't moving, which means that the lifter is on the heel of the can. And at some point it will start to rise. Here we go, it's rising. One revolution, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you see it stops, and then it drops down again. So there is a point, I'm continuing to turn the engine clockwise, I'm not going to turn it anti-clockwise because it, there, we know there's backlash in the cam, and we, we want our gears to be fully engaged all the way around. If we go back, then these degrees on the wheel are going to be slightly out. So what we're looking for is that peak again. So we'll keep turning it round, drops back down to zero, well, the lowest point, so we're on the heel, and then it starts to go up. And I'm going to slowly find that peak. Just tiny movements at the moment. I'm trying to move it as smoothly as possible from the flywheel. I think it's slowing down now. There we go, it stopped. So I'm going to just move it forward, see if it starts to drop again. Yeah, it starts to drop. And I'm going to turn it back by a quarter of a turn just to make sure we keep the, ga the gears engaged properly. Go around again. And there you go, it stopped again. So I'm going to make a note of where that is. We now need to find the middle of the heel, so the opposite side of the cam to where the lobe is at its peak. So I'm still at the peak here. And all you do is you turn the wheel through one full revolution You notice the dial's not moving anymore. And we were sort of like in this range here, weren't we? So that's 73. So if I put it right, if it between, <coughs> what do we have? So check my notes. 66 and 73 after bottom did center. So 66, 73. The difference between those two is seven, so three and a half from there. So that's about the middle. So the next job, we now know that this is the lowest point in the middle of a cycle on the intake number one, and we now zero the clock. So it put.
So there's a little bit of flex. And I've got Bob's. Bob's blog says that if your dial indicator moves whilst you try and set zero, you need a better mount for it. Well, he's absolutely right. I do need a better mount for my dial indicator. And that's something I think if I'm going to continue to do these sorts of engines, I'm going to have to invest in. So the clock is now set to zero. Right, we're now going to measure from the zero point the maximum lift. So we have to count the amount of times the clock the dial indicator turns round. So I'm going to go slowly because it's going to, there we go. One millimetre, that's one turn. Two millimetres and a bit. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Nine point nine and two, three, four, five, five. Nine point nine five five is maximum lift. So I've made a note of that. I made a note of nine point nine five five millimeters at seventy four degrees off the bottom dead center. That's where I've ended up on the uh, degree wheel. So now we go back to the middle of the heel of the cam. So it's one full revolution from here. Right, we've returned to the middle of the heel. So the lowest point in the middle of the cam and the clock's on zero. And I'm gonna turn it until I reach five hundredths of an inch, 0 0.050 of an inch. And that's the height of lift we measure on the cam card and all the information on the cam card is taken from that point. Obviously you can't do it from the top of the lobe or the back of the heel because it dwells there for some time. So there's a specific, a specific point where you reach 500 of an inch, which is translated in the millimetres for my, my dial, 1.27. So we're going to turn it round. I'm going to wait for the clock to move. Here we go. One, two, get my stupid hair out of the way. I'm going to go past it. 127. So that is exactly 500 of an inch. And it's coming out as 19.5 degrees after top dead centre. So I'm going to mark that down in my book. An annotation for this is opening O of intake, OI. 19.5 degrees after top dead center. So I've written that down in my book and the annotation is opening of intake valve 19.5 degrees after top dead center. So I th as far as dialing in the cam goes, I think I might be in luck because the cam card is saying the intake opens at 19 degrees before top dead center, which is kind of confusing on this diagram because it's showing um, the degrees before we get to top dead center as it's moving round. And the dial, you'd think 19 degrees before top, ten, top dead center would be down, um, oh, so it's off, off the camera down here, but it's actually up here. This is, it says here, intake valve opens before top dead center. So that's before it gets round to top, 
top dead center. So the engine is moving around this way. So anything approaching this zero mark is before top dead center. So I think I'm in luck. I'm not gonna have to change the washers and, and go through this procedure again, I hope. Um, so it's pretty bang on with the first set of washers. So we will continue with the process. So now we've reached um, the checkpoint, 1.27 millimeters, five hundredths of an inch. We are gonna zero the dial because we're gonna check everything from this height. So I've re-zeroed the gauge so that we can turn the engine round and get to the other side of the lobe where we're going to measure the, the degrees where the intake valve closes. Now I'm going to turn the engine around until I get back to that point. So it's going to go up as it reaches the peak of the lobe. There we go, and it's going to come down again. And I'm keeping an eye on the small gauge. One more. Ooh. Just went past it. I'm going to go back, quarter of a turn. Just to make sure the gears are meshed properly. There we go, I'm on it. And that is 50, 50.5, 50.5 after bottom dead center. Again, a result. I'm going to note that down. So I've noted that down. Closing of the inlet valve, 50.5 degrees after bottom, bottom dead center. And the specifications for the crank to work perfectly well in timing wise is 51. So it's half a degree out. So this is excellent news. I, I am very, very happy. With the gauge still zeroed, at our checking point of 0 0.05 inches or 1.27 millimeters we're going to turn the engine around and we're going to find the peak the maximum lift from this new zero position so i'm going to turn it around going down obviously Start going back up. Oh, take it back. So that's just gone through the zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven revolutions, eight. Slowing down. Just there. Eight point eight one. That's the maximum lift. I'll make a note of that. So that's the max lift from the zero point eight point eight one millimeters. And what we're looking for to help us with the geometry of the rocker arms. I want to find where the 50% of max lift is. So I've divided 8.81 by 2, which is 4.405. So now I want to find what degrees and what part of the cycle 50% of max lift occurs. So I'm going to turn it around. We're going to go back all the way around. We get back to that zero checking point. Oop, just went through it. So I want to find 
4.405 or basically 4.4 4.405, I think I can do that. So that's one, two, three, four. Oh, just went past it. Let's go through it again. On the hill. So that's just past zero. So one revolution, two, three, four. Go on. There you go. I don't want to touch it. I'm. I'd say I am four point four. 04 so pretty close and we are where are we 22.5 degrees after top dead center so we'll make a note of that so 50 percent of max lift occurs at 22.5 degrees after top dead center so I'm pretty pleased with that. My cam card says intake opens at 19 and closes at 51. And I have got 19 and a half and 50 and a half. So it's bang in there. It's absolutely bang in there. Um, it's out by half a degree. And as the washers that come with the kit to adjust it, adjust, can advance it by two degrees or retard it by two degrees, you know, I'm only, by doing that, I'm only obviously going to make it worse. So if you were really finickety, you could make your own washers and try and advance by half a degree to get a little bit closer. But according to Bob Hoover's blog, if you're a degree out, then it's happy days. And if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Um, he seems to know what he's talking about. Um, although I have no provenance for his information. Um, but... I'm only half a degree out, so well done CB Performance for making this Eagle racing cam. It's lovely and it seems to be working really great, but it's not over there for me because now I have to move my dial indicator over to the um, outlet valve, um, exhaust valve, lifter, and uh, do the whole procedure again, which I won't bore you with, to see if I'm hitting 17 and 53. Um, I mean, you, you've guessed it, it's probably gonna be 16 and a half. Um, and uh, 53 and a half, um, or, or is it 17 and a half? Oh my God, this whole thing's really quite confusing really, but um, I'm gonna measure it and I'm gonna see where I am on those. Um, and then um, I will, will report back to you on how that turns out. So not so full of smiles now after doing the uh, exhaust valve lifter, because if we look at my notes here, um, I have the exhaust valve opening at 55 before bottom dead center and on the cam card it says 53 and then I have it closing at 16 and a half degrees after top dead center and the cam card says 17. So these three measurements are all out by half a degree which is great. This one, out by two degrees. And sometimes, I mean, I've measured it five or six times, and I'd say it sort of averaged out, I think I did four at 55, and I did four at 55 and a half. And I haven't got the most accurate tools. They're not the world's best dial indicator. Um, the clamp's not, the support for it's not the best. And the actual indicator itself, the gauge itself is on the cheap side of things. I've had it for many years and I really should upgrade it to a, uh, a better one, maybe possibly a digital one. Um, but yeah, um, that's all um, a little bit confusing. So does that mean 
I don't know about these sort of things, but does that mean the cam has been ground incorrectly and the grind on it's not right? Um, it's slightly misshapen on that lobe. Um, I'm going to have to do some more research on this. But what it means is, it means the valve, exhaust valve, is opening two degrees. Well, actually, if you add in the factor in the difference from the other other valves opening and closing, it's opening one and a half degrees earlier than it should be compared to the timing on the other valves. So during the explosion inside the chamber, those hot gases are being expelled or being allowed to expel earlier, which says to me you're going to get a loss of power. Um, it's going to be marginal. I imagine, I don't know, I don't really know much about um, cam timing. This is all a new experience for me. Um, maybe some of you guys could put some comments up and um, I can uh, give me some more information. I'm going to do a whole bunch more research tonight and to see if other people have had a similar problem and if the exhaust valve timing is as critical as I'm imagining it would be, especially opening, um, closing as well. I mean, it's all important, isn't it? Anyway, so that's the cam gear dialed in, kind of on three parts of the four part cycle. After discovering the exhaust valve is opening two degrees different from the cam card spec, I called CV Performance and asked them what this could mean, do I need to send it back? And they said, well, it shouldn't be a problem as long as when you measure the other side, it's the same. Um, and so I asked for a little bit of clarity. I said, do you mean, when you say the other side, do you mean two and four or two, uh, or do you mean opposite to what one, three? And they said, yes. Um, which is obviously not answering the question and me being British and too polite to push them any further. Um, I didn't ask for any more clarity, which is a bit stupid of me. <laughs> so I have measured the lobes um, 180 degrees through the cycle on cylinder number two and found them to be similar. The exhaust valve opens earlier, um, but only by one degree not the two degrees on number one cylinder valves rather. Um, so I have degrees of revolution of 250 on the inlets and 251 on the two and three, two and four cylinders and on one and four, one and four cylinders I have 252 degrees and the guys at CB, I spoke to a guy called Mark and he was like, that really does not going to make much difference for you at all. Um, all grinds are slightly different. So I imagine, and I'm filling in the gaps here and they haven't actually told me this, but I imagine they have uh, a cam card spec for that type of cam and they make a lot of different cams. And when they do the grinds, they do come out slightly different. So he was like, it's not going to be a problem. Um, uh, so I'm going to bolt it together and we'll see how it runs. But um, it'd be interesting to see what you guys think about that. So a few days have passed and there's a bit of an update. I contacted, as you know, I phoned up CB Performance and asked them what was going on. And at the same time, I emailed the dilemma to David, who's the sales guy I bought the kit from and was dealing with my order, who was super helpful um, during the purchasing phase and he said to me at that point if you have any problems any questions don't hesitate to contact me well I've had a few questions but I've sort of like done my own research you know things like the double thrust bearings and bits and pieces like that and I've sorted out the problems myself on well, this one I couldn't really find much about this problem because most guys don't dial in or do cam tiling um, cam timing so 
I emailed him and he's got back to me and he says, hello, Adam, I'm not sure I can correctly translate what was told to me, but here goes. So obviously he's spoken to the tech guys. So what I understand is there is always going to be some variance from cam tags unless only one camshaft is made from start to finish one time. We make a run of 20 cams or so. We grind one, check the specs, then grind the rest. Just by taking the cam out of the machine can change the variances slightly. Even normal wear and tear of the machines over time can affect the variances. According to the techs, the cam is within tolerance and will be fine to run it. No two cams will be exactly alike, even if we grind it again. Thanks, David. So, double confirmation now. I've spoke to some guy called Mark. David has spoken to the text, maybe spoke to Mark or somebody else. And they've got back to me, and it's what I suspected, that when they grind the cams, they don't always come out the same. Uh, and they say it's within tolerances, so I'm going to bolt it together and I'm going to run it. So that's the end of that job. I don't know what I really gained from that. I guess I get what I gained from dialing in the cam, doing the cam timing, is understanding whether I needed to offset the cam gear or not. And I didn't. I just went with the gold washers, zero offset, and it seemed to work out fine. If I ever build another engine, I will try a different cam, maybe an Engel cam or a cam from Jean Berg or somebody like that. And I will go through the same process again and see what I get, see if it's um, more aligned to the cam card or not. So I've timed in the cam and ready to move on to the next stage, which is attaching the rest of the rods and building up the short block. Until next time, thanks for watching.